All right, so uh, I, in fact, am not Jing Chen, who was announced to be here. She's the UI architect. Uh, but she had to cancel at the last moment. She had some, some, some conflict. Um, so uh, my talk is slightly different. Uh, hopefully, you'll find it interesting as well. Uh, I need to start by explaining a little bit about what Guideware does. We, we build core systems for the insurance industry. So if you have car insurance, or home insurance, or in fact, anything except for medical, when you call the insurance company, chances are they're using our software uh, when they talk to you on the phone. And um, so the insurance industry is interesting in, in a way that each company does things slightly different. So we couldn't really build a piece of software that we could just sell them for them to use. What we had to build is something that is extremely extensible. And uh, we wound up building something that is essentially a development environment. And that's what I'm going to show you. So we have our own language, our own IDE, et cetera, et cetera. And we'll, so I'll show you kind of the other side of the story, something that is not open source, at least yet. Uh, and how that, that integrates in <coughs> with Selenium at this point. OK, so, um, uh, so basically, this is, this is the plan. And uh, we'll go a little bit through you know, how the web UI is created, running Selenium test and running what we call a server test. And then I'll show you a little bit <coughs> uh, about the language that we use, which is called uh, Gosu internally. So let me start with, with our app here. <coughs> so we, you know, we run in the browser. We're not an internet app. We're, we're an intranet app. And um, as I mentioned, we also have this development environment. So. Uh, what we wanted to do, we're, we're a Java shop in terms of our platform, but we also wanted for, for ease of developing UIs and, and customizing, have something that uh, sort of like a, well, essentially a dynamic language where you can just refresh uh, the screen and see the changes that you make to your code. So I'll show you how, how we accomplish that. So Alt Shift uh, E, and so that's going to get me to it's going to get me to where? Where's my idea here? Yeah, unfortunately, the difference in resolution, I couldn't quite adjust it. So I'm going to have to wait for this thing here. Oh, boy. Ah, there it is. OK. So basically, uh, by, by pressing Alt Shift E, that got me to the, the design screen here. And as you can see, we have a little IDE, so you can design the screen, paint it, et cetera. Once you're done, you, you go back to the browser, press Alt Shift L, and it immediately reloads it. And so that is nice. Um, and um, the second nice thing about this environment is that the language that we're using is static. So we have a full we have full IDE support um, as in any kind of a static language, and yet it executes uh, dynamically. So we kind of have the best of both worlds for uh, for this to work. So let me actually go and run run a test here. So I've got a got a test prepared, and uh, so a little bit about this language. It's Java compatible, so we can call you know, you can call any Java uh, routine. Uh, by the way, is this big enough? Can, can you guys see that? Okay. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, it's uh, static, uh, a little bit terser than Java, so it's a more modern language. Uh, in some ways, this is similar to Scala. It has similar features, if any of you have looked at Scala. And um, so you can, you, know, you can do things like um, you know, control space, and you'll, you'll get the code completion, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the way we generate uh, HTML is we have our own internal object model, of what, what we're going to generate. And therefore, we can write tests using this language. We don't have to worry about. How you know what kind of HTML? Worry about how we locate some field or XPath, anything like that. We, we, know, we never see any any of that. Um, so let's let's actually start a test running. Then I'll continue. So I'm going to run a test in the browser, and um, I'm going to use a special flag called uh, GW Remote URL, which I use often. 
Uh, and what that flag does, it actually runs the test in the server that I'm testing, right? So I'm, 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 ex I'm a exploratory tester. I don't really write regression tests per se. And so this is nice because it allows me to execute data loads of different tests against the server that I'm using at the, at the moment. And so there we go, we'll start running. And this will take a little while because there's some stuff it has to do. Uh, because it launches a separate process and has to bring up the whole type system and get everything going. And then eventually it will, it will get um, the browser going, hopefully. <laughs> So that's, that's the only kind of part that we need to optimize. We need to, we need to do some more caching in this, in this part. 